Chair Bus. Here. Chair Alder Holmquist. Here. Mr. Dorschel. Here. Ms. Devinish. Here. Mr. Kugel. Here. Mr. Stein. Here. Mr. Homburg. Here. Mr. Ganser is excused. Uh, item number three, approval of minutes from September 22nd. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Second. And edits, comments, deletions, corrections. Seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Appearances is there, is there someone here who wishes to appear on an item that's not on the agenda? Seeing none, we'll close the appearance section and uh, we'll move into number five, unfinished business. This will be a public hearing on a request by Vogel Wood Products, 1210 Femrite Drive, represented by William Vogel, owner, Steve Kelcher, Advanced Building Corporation, <coughs> for a 14,500 square foot building addition at this location. Good evening. Who's going? Hi. Come on up. Yep. My name is Stephen Kelcher. I'm here representing him, Bill Vogel for his project to answer questions or address concerns. Is there anything changed since the uh, last time you were here? As far as nope. Okay. Anyone else? If not, if you want to hang there, I'll close the public hearing and then you can just be up there. Um, okay. So close the public hearing, move on to <coughs> 5B, which is consideration of action on the request. Sonia? So this was last reviewed in a pre-hearing conference in July, so this is the second reading by the Plan Commission. And staff's recommendation is for approval with six conditions of approval. Um, one through five are related to a report by our consulting engineer, Darren Pope, which he can comment on. And then the sixth one is that all four building elevations shall be of the same material and color, just because they weren't shown on the elevations. Um, so just to ensure that they were all the same. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pope's here. If we have any questions or do we want a summary of his recommendations? Short one? Short one? Sure. Darren, you want to come up and... <coughs> so at the previous uh, plan commission meeting, they hadn't um, finalized plans at that time uh, since then they've submitted uh, some plans uh, that I received and um, uh, did talk a couple days ago with Kevin Parrish Quam engineering who was the, the that prepared the plans mm -hmm. and uh, we talked about the various comments that I had and he didn't have any concerns with uh, meeting any of the comments that I had made um, so um, The, uh, in terms of the site layout and grading, um, one of the ones I'll bring to your attention, I guess, is the, uh, the they're adding parking stalls and their total number of parking stalls that are shown on the site plan are 29. And according to ADA requirements, then that would require them then to add an additional accessible parking space. And um, with the current site plan, it appears that they have one with an access aisle um, that is uh, next to um, a, a person door near an overhead door, mm -hmm. um, but the main entrance seems to be on the other end of that. Um, and so they'll have to add another one, and per ADA requirements, they should have an accessible route from those stalls uh, to the accessible entrance. And uh, I'm not sure the history is why the parking stall that is, the, the handicap stall right now is put where it is. It doesn't seem to appear to be where the main entrance or the public entrance to the building is. Um, so the you know, recommendation would be that they provide two accessible parking stalls uh, that are close to the accessible uh, uh, entry to the building. Um, with an accessible route that meets the ADA requirements. So you're, aside from the, um, in the recommendations, it said to uh, the erosion control and stormwater plan, as commented on by um, the consultant, you'd also add to add, I'd uh, like to see added two um, accessible stalls and route identified. How would you, how would you phrase that? 
that you'd like to add to us, like them to add? Yeah, to that, us that the American Disabilities Act requirements that they have to add at least one other site or uh, parking space because of the number of sites that they have, and that those uh, accessible stalls be put as close as possible to the the accessible entrance. Okay. That would be part of condition too. Okay, so that, that would be covered under two? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And then um, talking with the fire chief, um, uh, we need to have a 20-foot uh, wide fire lane on the west side of the building. And it appears that the access aisle that they have shown there uh, would be sufficient um, if it would be marked, if the curb would be marked in yellow and it's signed up that, you know, that it's a, that it's a fire lane. In terms of utilities, we're recommending that the the uh, connection that they make to the water service or to the water main be a live tap, so they don't have to shut down service to any adjacent um, companies in the area. And we're asking the applicant's engineer to double check the size of the water service to the building. It's an inch and a half copper, and typically with sprinkler buildings, you see sizes of four inch, six six inch, or eight inch to get the required pressure and flow for the sprinkler system. So that's something we'd want them to look into and verify um, that they have adequate supply through that existing service. Um, the Director of Public Works here in Monona had requested that the storm sewer that's in Femrite Drive be uh, reinforced concrete pipe due to the, uh, the shallow cover. There's a foot and a half cover over it um, in the frequent truck traffic that, that you have on Femrite Drive there. And then, I guess erosion control in stormwater. Um, they're adding a dry detention pond uh, towards the back of the site. In, in terms of erosion control, like to see some um, riprap or some stone um, rock trenches at the areas where they're concentrating flow. So along the north uh, or along the west side, where they have the curb line coming into the basin. And then also there's a loading dock where they have a swale there with their concentrating flow to a low point into that dry detention basin. So I'd recommend that they use some riprap or some rock trenches to um, prevent erosion from happening in those spots. And then um, tied into that would be the requirement for oil and grease control. And they currently the plans don't propose to do anything for oil and grease removal for the north half of the site. Um, so using rock trenches at those locations sufficiently sized would uh, help them to meet that requirement. And then also uh, in terms of sediment control, the dry detention pond that they're proposing um, would meet the 40% reduction of suspended solids uh, per the calculations that they provided. However, um, they need to do some modifications there to um, meet the county standards for constructing of the dry detention basins and, and for proper operation function of it which would include some four bays to trap sediment uh, before it gets into the main basin to put a stone weaver around the outlet pipe to prevent sediment from uh, just short circuiting through the pond um, and then also um, we're asking if they um, have an emergency spillway out of the pond uh, in case the outlet would get plugged and the water would back up in the pond. And north of the site, there's a uh, public drainage way. Um, and it looks like the topography that's there right now, it would lend itself to have a spillway going north to that drainage way uh, so that it could drain off the site and then directly into that public drainage way rather than onto adjacent property. Um, for rate control, it looks like the use of that dry detention pond would uh, provide sufficient rate control so that their existing or their post construction condition of runoff rate would meet what they have now. And then for vehicle circulation, um, don't have really concerns with the city's fire truck. That's a pretty much a straight shot in to the driveway in, in along there. Um, however, would like to see. Um, some turning radius is shown on the drawing for the largest truck that they anticipate because they'll have to come straight in and then back into the loading docks and make a Y movement to come back out um, 
to head south to Femrite Drive. So that's pretty much the major comments that I have. So if you have any questions, right, thank answer you. those. Commission members, any comments, questions? Mr. Romberg? I know your engineer is your cultural need, everything he's talked about. Yes. Okay. Um, one question I have is when you talk about meeting our parking design standards, is our overhead work tonight? Do we know? We'll see if they happen to switch it. Um, when you put your last addition on, that's, that doesn't really meet our standards. And we decided as a commission that's okay. And I can't really point to it, but this angle parking coming out of the driveway, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, there, there's no way to get back out. It doesn't have the width we need. Well, we looked at it as an existing business, and we looked at it as it was the best they could do. Mm -hmm. And we said, this is okay with us. So I just want to make sure we know that. So, so mm -hmm. when something comes through, we look at it and say, oh, you've got to have more width or whatever. We looked at that as a commission and thought that was fine. And then when we looked at the pre-hearing, we talked about where they could get a little green space jog in a little bit, which is what they've done. So unless there's a dire urgent need to get that semi turning movement in or something, just assume leave it the way they've drawn it, if that's possible. It's just one comment to mind. Okay. Okay. That's all I had for Darren. Okay. Any other comments in general? Mr. Remmer? One comment. I think you've done a great job. I think this is an awesome business to stay in own and have them expand. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, I looked at the site thinking we need more trees, but that, that landscaping on that front little narrow area, it, it looks really good. That's and it's, it's got a combination of some bushes and some grasses. It looks really, really nice. The one comment I have on the landscaping is all the money you're putting in the landscaping is in the back, where it's pretty much going to be the truck driver's going to see it. So my thought was, if you could get something right in this, there's a little narrow area where you first come in. I guess we don't have oh. a uh, overhead. Oh, we have that. There we go. Uh, there's a little narrow area in here, and maybe somewhere in there, it gets some of those grasses or something that would grow and be pretty sturdy. Does that make sense? Because that's sure. something where the general public's coming. Right, just right in here, where you first come in. The general public's coming. You, you've done a fabulous job with a lot of your your small, low-growing plants, and they seem to be salt tolerant because I know we pile snow up in that front too, and they, they look beautiful this year. Yep. So if we could just get something along that, that would be where the general public might see it. It just softened a little bit between the buildings. Otherwise, it's building asphalt building. Sure. And that, that's the only comment I have on those. So that's along the west property line? Correct. Yes. Where, where the curb line just starts to come away from that other building once they have that extra width. Okay. And, and just something, it, it, it's certainly not the whole thing, just something that you see when you come in and there be some green something against the neighbor's building, some green something growing. That's really the only spot you have. Uh, I thought about trees, but really what you have was, I think, really nice. Okay. Uh, I think everything looks good. Don't really have any comments. Any, any comments? Uh, Google no, comments? no, no comments. I think it's going to look nice. It's great, great that you're staying in Monona. Brian, no comments. Sharon, Sarah, motion. Approval conditions as recommended by, by staff and at condition seven with the revised landscaping we talked about tonight to be approved by staff. For a second. Second. Further discussion? None. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Congratulations and thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to item 5C, public hearing and request by Kathy Bartels and Kevin King, homeowners represented by Joel Geisbuehler, Wanakee Remodeling, for approval of the zoning permit, site plans, and building elevations for a detached garage in the multifamily zoning district at 4027 Manona Drive. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Jeannie Cohen. I'm the architect who designed the um, detached garage, and I'm representing Kathy Bartels and Kevin King in this matter. Uh, so we're proposing a, um, a moderate sized garage, two stall garage, uh, located on the street side of the house, closer to the house than to the street. It's set back about 30 feet. Uh, it is in the design of the house with uh, land and stone and siding and hip roofs. Um, and is uh, 
uh, there's a simple but nice uh, landscape plan to go along with it. Anything else? Okay. Uh, we also have uh, Lynn Jacobson, 4029 Monona Drive, would like to speak against. I'm Lynn Jacobson. I live at 4029 Monona Drive, the south side of this property <coughs> that has a proposed garage. The first knowledge that I had of this um, proposal was from the city of Monona a few days before your September meeting when it was originally scheduled. Mm -hmm. I talked to the neighbor on the other side of this at 4025, Dale Gregory. <coughs> Um, after I got notice and he said that Kevin King and Kathy Bartels discussed their plans with them at least three weeks prior to your last meeting but they did not extend that same courtesy to me um, I'd like to comment on Kevin King's letter to the Planning Commission of September 8th he mentions that the proposed garage will improve not only their home but the aesthetics to others <coughs> I beg to differ with him. There is no value to anyone else except to both he and his wife. Kevin King states that their home has a very small two-car tandem garage and no basement. Therefore, the garage needs to provide basement storage as well, for, as well as vehicles. And they need to store lawnmowers, snow shovels, rakes, trash bins, recycle bins, bikes. Actually, I believe this would be considered a quite a large two-car tandem garage. It is approximately 40 and a half by 12 feet. Kathy Bartels drives a VW Bug that is approximately 14 feet long, and Kevin King's is approximately 16 feet long. That leaves uh, 10 and a half feet for storage. Regarding storage of lawn items, I'm not sure that is relevant. They have a lawn service, which I assume will also do the snow shoveling. In fact, Kathy Bartell said her husband had heart issues, so shouldn't be doing any of those chores. If they do, in fact, have to store those items, there is a boathouse, which is approximately the size of a one-car garage with easy access as a slight sloping hill. Even if there was a boat stored in it, which there isn't at the moment, there would be room to store these items, including bikes. So the only items they wish to keep out of sight would be the garbage and trash receptacles. I would think either a rubber-made container or a custom-made uh, custom container would house them sufficiently outside the garage. If there wasn't enough room for storage, perhaps they could extend their existing garage to become flush with the front of the house, adding an additional 17 and a half feet. Then the total storage space alone would be 28 by 12. According to Kevin King's letter, they would be required to take a maple in the way of this proposed garage. Kevin King states that it had to come down anyway because it was diseased. <laughs> I have pictures of that tree and would see this tree <clears throat> every day. My parking area and turnaround area faces it. I believe it was a healthy tree. This was a 45 to 50 year old tree. It has already been taken down in fact, it was taken down the same day of your last meeting during the day in preparation for this garage. <coughs> Kathy King and Kevin, K Kathy Bartels and Kevin King made an offer on this property in March of this year. The, list the listing clearly stated that this house had no basement and a two-car tandem garage. They purchased it anyway. Those two facts did not change and still exist today. Then after three and a half months of living there, they submit, <coughs> they submit a request for approval to build a detached garage in the middle of the front yard because the existing conditions are not going to work well at all, as stated by Kevin King in his letter. Kevin King has been in the real estate business for approximately 40 years, 12 years in sales and brokerage, <coughs> 
and the remaining years working for Wisconsin Realtors Association, first as a staff attorney, then vice president, and president presently as general counsel. Kathy Bartels has been selling real estate for over 20 years. I believe one would be hard pressed to find any more knowledgeable people than these two, with the exception of Mr. Homburg, I expect. I don't believe that either of them could claim they were unaware of the ramifications that a non-basement and a tandem garage present. Should others be impacted by one person's inconvenience? Should one person's decision create hardship on others? Is the city's job to listen and protect only one party or all parties? The loss of trees is great. The Kings have already taken down the 45 to 50 year old maple previously mentioned. They also have taken down two apple trees and an arborvita. If this garage is approved, it will come within six inches of a trunk of a 15 to 20 year old maple. If that, the tree isn't taken out, it will die, but I assume it will be taken down because it is too close to the structure. I understand that the city wants to retain a park-like effect. <clears throat> when trees go down, grass is covered up, and boxes, garages, go up. There's nothing left that could even closely resemble a park-like effect. Theoretically, all remaining residences could put up detached garages. <clears throat> Imagine the look from Monona Drive. A garage at 40, I, I'm not sure of the address, it's either 4017 or 4019, went up within the last two years. The difference from that location to 4027 is as follows. <clears throat> 4019 Monona Drive, uh, both lots on either side of that, this property, both north and south side, are approximately 100 feet. The north property, it's 4015, is set back amongst the pines. The garage at 4019 is on the south side of their property, away from 4015. The south property, 4021, is a condo up on a hill and set back a, approximately 120 feet from the sidewalk. <clears throat> the garage is covered with pines the new garage. The garage sits out in front, the condo's garage sits out in front of the condo with the living room windows on the south side of their garage set back so they don't even see the new garage. My house, 4029 Monona Drive, both lots on either side of the proposed garage are 50 feet. <coughs> the proposed garage will be placed on the south side of 4027. My garage is on my south side of my property. My living area is on my north side. So that uh, severely impacts my view. My house is only set back about 95 feet from the sidewalk. My living room bay window and two upstairs windows, bedroom windows are on the north side of my garage and my house, which would be severely limited or blocked entirely by this proposed structure. And I do have pictures. I don't know how to show them to you if you don't have any. doesn't seem to be working. Um, I'm going to leave a packet with you as well. Yes. Okay. Um, looking out my bay window, I now have a view of approximately 135 feet. If the garage is allowed, it will cut my view to 29 feet, which is equal to 21% 20, of the existing view. My house will have a tunnel vision. <clears throat> One can add any type of landscaping to try to enhance or cover up a structure, but any way you look at it, it's still a big box in a front yard. These lake properties have been, and in some cases are still long-term residents. Uh, Pat Burns, 4031, on the other side of me, has been there for 55 years. Ken Van, whom we purchased our house from, was there for 40 years. Yangs, uh, this 4027, prior to this purchase, were there 15 years and the previous owners many, many years. Gregory's, on the other side, 4025, have been there for years as well as Rex Olson's. They have been residences with families. These families used to get together for picnics and Christmas parties. No longer. Newcomers want to want newcomers 
want you to approve something that would only benefit those themselves, no one else. I don't think they've pursued their other options. And what I, again, I have pictures in here. Um, what the, their existing garage is set back 17 and a half feet. An option would be to extend that garage and bring it out flush with the front of their house. It would, it would have very little impact on the neighborhood or the neighbors. That would give them a total of 28 additional um, storage, uh, um, storage feet in addition to their cars. Um, option two would be, uh, there's two bedrooms on the front side of the house, would be to convert the northeast bedroom that, board, that is right next to this tandem garage, make that a garage, along with extending the tandem garage, and you'd have your two-car side-by-side garage, part of the house attached, which would be more, much more desirable. Either option would not significantly improve, impact the neighborhood or the neighbors. What I ask the board to do is table this tonight and look at the pictures, look at the options, and investigate it a little bit longer. Thank you. If you want to, yeah, Mr. Homburg can pass down the, the items in for folks to look at. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this matter? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and move on to... Marty? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, come on up. I'm, I'm sorry. I missed you. We'll keep it open. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thanks. And uh, Marty Richards, 4040 Monona Drive. Uh, would like to register against and speak, I guess, would be correct. Okay, just briefly. Uh, Go ahead. This is, this is something that definitely affects Lynn uh, much more, but um, we are across the street from uh, the proposed structure. And I would just like to register as someone who has been fighting the, the the development the the that has been going on in Manuna Drive uh, we've been here before uh, we were here uh, when they were taking down trees and widening Manona Drive here and in the Madison City Council um, we were here uh, when the Encore project which is going up now was proposed and we're living on a lake shore and green space is really important if we want to protect the lakes and just in general another building right so close to the lakeshore again um, it's, it's just another bad idea I would like to just go down in on record as you know saying we should protect as much of the natural greenery the the trees a, as, as we can and not add to the stress of a very dense what's going to be even denser population living on the lakeshore so thanks thank you anyone else wish to speak Seeing none, okay, we're going to close the public hearing, move on to um, 5D consideration of action. Sonia? So this is a single family home. Um, usually a detached garage for a single family home would not come to the plan commission, but this property is zoned multifamily and Monona zoning code requires that any new structures in a multifamily zoning district be reviewed and approved by the plan commission. So there are a few other similar cases where the plan commission has done this and one would be the single family home just a few properties north of this at 4017 Monona Drive. Um, as well as a property on Femright Drive that's zoned community design district, so another similar circumstance. Um, the plan commission can review the setbacks of the proposed detached garage and, um, and make a decision, and staff's recommendation is for approval. Thank you. Commission members, comments? I think it's a nice looking garage. I don't see an issue with where it's going to be placed based on the pictures that I was just looking at now. Thank you. Rob, any comments? Um, with the 
the drainage in the gutters, where is that all being discharged or how is uh, that It'll with? be uh, discharged towards the street. I have accommodated for some discharge area on the lawn and then it will go with the natural flow of the, um, of the land, which is a slight bend to the front. Okay. Um, my only comment would be for the landscaping on the south side of the property. Um, it's just four, uh, looks like four small U's. Mm -hmm. Which is the same as what will be along the house and on the, that side. Keeping it simple because uh, it is a lakeshore house and most of the enjoyment is on the lakeshore side. So to keep down some of the maintenance. Having something a little more height would um, make the visual driving down Monona Drive from this well, to the north it'll be a little used, less impactful. And then the stone ledge and then approximately four feet of siding. So it's, there's a gradual. We could add something else with a little more height. Those are my comments. Thank you. Mr. Amber, you Do you really think you can build and save that one maple? Uh, it's uh, I, th I don't think the existing one is a terribly healthy maple. Well, I think that's the one they're talking about. It's called the columnar maple that's still standing. It's still there. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is the owner's plan to, to build and still maintain it. It's, uh, and is it only six inches away? Or no. Is it a little no. more than that? No, no, no. It's, it's farther away than that. Okay, yeah. six inches you wouldn't be able to dig a fountain. No, no. When we dig our... our Your slab, slab on grade or yeah, cross slab ball? on grade. Okay, so you don't uh, have to dig down. Edge, right. right. So that'll help. Exactly. We're not digging full foot. Uh, that gives some of the height you're looking for too. That thing's tall. It's a column. I mean, it's there are also two other trees yeah, right there long. that even, you don't yeah, even. Drives, my parents right. owned that house for 20 some years. Which house? The house we're talking about. Yeah, and then why Uh No, Yang's. Oh, Yang, okay. Uh, Cohen. I go back too far. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Vans um, okay. live in their condo, or Mr. Van does. But uh, they, um, so my parents planted one of those trees and. Yeah, it it uh, was beyond its usefulness, that one. I understand your concern for this garage. Here, here's where we're at, though. And I wish I could put it up, but we can't put it up tonight. It's here, as staff said, because it's in a multifamily district, which we have to review. And normally, we wouldn't tell a homeowner where they can and can't put a garage. And normally, it'd be under our, our standards zoning ordinance, oh, which this meets everything in our standard zoning ordinance for a single family home. So for me to come in tonight and say, well, this would have met everything except for since we have to see it, now it's no good, would be, I think, a hardship on the property owner. We can, we do have more discretion than the building inspector, but they're proposing a, a very attractive garage with the stone that's on it, the sign, it looks just like the home. I mean, I, I think it's one of the attractive homes along Winona Drive. I, I understand the vistas to the lake, but it doesn't get any closer to the property line than the existing home. In fact, it's a little further away. So although it'll cut down on the angle, it's not really cutting out that corridor. Being 30 feet from the road, there there's, it really wouldn't even be a variance from our standard residential zoning district, much less what we've done down the road. We've had the other garage, Sonia, that we zoned in there also, where the dentist, I don't remember him, maybe some of you remember his name, he had the very... Long. Uh, pardon? Was it Mary Long? No, no. The dentist, he had those very, almost like little Norway type of architecture yeah. up there, and then we mm -hmm. zoned that garage in the front mm -hmm. there when you needed that. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so we have done this a number of times in a number of multifamily family districts, especially on the lake, because they don't have the opportunity. It meets the zoning ordinance of under 100,000, or 1,000, 100,000, 1,000 square feet for uh, uh, accessory building. Mm -hmm. uh, More I than three feet from this lot line. Yeah, I think it's yeah, three feet. And then this three one's actually the seven. seven, seven mm -hmm. and a half. So, so I don't think, I could sit here tonight and say you can't put a garage in. I understand your concern. It does block your view. There's, there's no doubt about it blocks it somewhat. But it's also, they have some property rights to be able to build within reason, within our normal zoning ordinance, and, and they're hitting most of that. One thing I would ask the applicant is to try to soften that blow, 
might you buy some additional landscaping or something. I, I know you don't want it, and, and no matter what, you just assume it went away, but there's some landscaping you could put there to help that view. In, some addi ad in addition Correct. to the use? Correct, okay. as, as Mr. Stein was referring to. But uh, the calendar maple, if you can save that, that would be yeah. good to save. Cause it'll That's right the plan. With that. I see you have a flowering crab on the back side, <laughs> which will be in that view that will soften it. Um, they're not proposing to put just whatever cheap side they can towards no. you or anyone else. They're putting the same stone on all four sides. I, I, I really have it's to. It's only the front side. No, no, no. it goes around the there, building. There's, wings, there's stone up three, four feet on the plants we have all the way around. So they're putting stone by you with the same size. They're doing the same look of their existing home. They're not trying to cheapen it up and have you look at the back side, which obviously is the final side of the garage. So, so I don't think the applicants are are trying to put something in the neighborhood that doesn't fit. So for what's been proposed, I guess my one suggestion would be we could help the neighbor with some additional landscaping, whatever that is. And I, I don't know what that is. And maybe you don't want any additional landscaping, maybe you do. But to soften it, make it look like it's been there a while, I think would help a little bit. Other than that, I, I don't see, for me to say they can't do it, it's creating a hardship for, for a property owner where we don't really have the teeth to be doing that. It's, it's not it's not a violation of any code we have mm -hmm. if it were in any residential district. That's a tough one. Thank you, Mr. Humber. Griff, any comments? No, I agree. I think we have really limited uh, discretion to review this and because it meets all of the other standards I think it is within the right of the property owner even though there may be other options and I would agree that if some landscaping could soften the effect that would be helpful. Sharon? Yeah I'd like to see some additional screening some additional landscaping something of scale that's going to help mask uh, the, mm -hmm. especially the back of the garage there that would be towards her property and the side um, I see that you've got river rock in there, but I'm not sure what plantings you might have going through there. Uh, we use. have we have limited it to, um, I have to look back <laughs> at it. Um, we've added a, um, uh, use along the back, mm -hmm. and then in between the house and the garage that they would look at, there is a, um, uh, I think it's a burning bush. Red bud. And oh, red bud. Yeah, and then one to the front too. Yeah, I'd like to see color. something tied up around. The well, back. along the front, we're putting yeah, in okay. some um, um, hibiscus. Do you think that wrapping those around the garage would be? Well, you just have low use, and uh -huh. on that um, on the side of the property that's facing the neighbors, you've only got the brick or the land and stone, whatever it is, it's only half high, and so mm -hmm. your ewes are really going to come up and start to cover that? No, the ewes that. won't, but if we put some hibiscus there, no, they I'm can... I'm just saying, you've got ewes mm -hmm. down there currently, and mm -hmm. you've got your vinyl siding up above, so really the vinyl siding is going to be exposed to her, so I'd like to see something with some height and so okay. forth there to give her a little bit of screening and landscape through there. Okay. Sharon, is your thought that it would come back for that landscaping or that would be reviewed by staff Thank for approval. Staff. Thank you. Okay. Um, anything else, Sharon? No. Right. Um, although I understand the difficulty presented by a neighbor and I had an opportunity to speak uh, by phone for quite some time regarding this issue. This issue. But, um, although I agree with many of the comments that have been said here, uh, placing additional burdens for landscaping we wouldn't be doing this if you were down the road. So I think it's a, a, a nice gesture to be able to incorporate some of those, but I, I see it as you're, you're meeting all the objectives that we would have you meet if you were somewhere else. So mm -hmm. I don't believe that we have the authority to comment beyond that. One of the... Um, I don't know if it, it says that multifamily, I'm, I'm looking at the multifamily zoning district, uh, page two of seven in our, our handout. The last sentence, it said that um, it shall be designed to be compatible with nearby low density residential uses. 
I mean, there were some trees that were removed, and to replace them with additional landscaping, I think would would that make it more compatible with the neighborhood versus just losing all that landscaping? I guess, Sharon. Yeah, I think it would, and I I know in many instances where we felt the landscaping size or scale might not be. Um, providing a look and and I guess I feel like that we have that on the back of the garage here where we've got a lot of vinyl siding and we've got some low landscaping and so in my mind um, we're making a simple switch from the lower use to again something that's going to help screen the vinyl siding going through there so that to me is improving the look of the, of the, the item which I think is our charge to do that. Okay. Any further discussion? Mr. Amber. One quick quick note, it actually is, um, just for the record, it is cement board. It's not vinyl, which is oh, what we've been it says requiring. Vinyl on the plan. It is vinyl. It says cement on my plan. It says vinyl the, on mine. The updated plans uh, were changed. She, she changed from cement board to vinyl. Mm -hmm. She does not want to paint ever. What's the existing house? Uh, in old cedar. Cedar? She's okay. planning to change. Okay. Great. It is a premium for you. Mm -hmm. Is there such a thing? <laughs> okay. Anything else, Mr. Rambert? Do we have a motion? Move approval condition one is written by staff. Condition two that some additional landscape work be done and uh, can be approved by staff. To just additional landscape or to specifically to additional screen. landscaping. I'm, I'm leaving at that uh, some of part of the discussion and, and I think um, my grade is well we should have a second for that. I'll second. Okay, thanks. Um, my, my greatest hope would be if it's possible mm -hmm. just meet with the neighbor and see if there's something they prefer there. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, uh, we're not going to require you because okay. you know, the neighbor preferred you weren't building, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. But uh, in an ideal world, the two of you can sit down and say, Yeah, if you put a couple of hibiscus, I like hibiscus, that would be nice back there or whatever. I'm not asking for a lot of money to be spent, just something to sure. make that corner when the adjacent neighbor is looking out their bedroom window, mm -hmm. kitchen window, whatever it is, just mm -hmm. look a little more pleasant. Okay. All right, I will tell the homeowners so, something and like that. And then and the reason uh, it's approved by staff and somebody's been part of this discussion, you know that's what we want mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you can't agree to what it is, you know, then I think you and Sonia have to agree to what would be nice to just dress up that, that corner inside a little bit. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Is any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. <coughs> uh, moving on to 6A, consideration of action on request by Hockey Giant, represented by Bridget Browning. Maybe not, huh? Uh, uh, Ryan Signs for approval of two wall sign permits at 2355 West Broadway. Mary Beth, how are you? Very good. <laughs> I was trying on Twitter's hockey skates with them today. Yep, <laughs> that's right. We start Sunday. <laughs> You're kidding. No. Are you ready for me? Go ahead. My name is Mary Beth Growney, Celine from Ryan Signs, and if any of you would like to think I'm Bridget, I would be flattered. She would not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we are here representing Hockey Giant, who um, is going into Southtown Mall, and we are hopeful that you will look at our consideration for a sign on the West Broadway elevation as well as the Beltline being consistent with other approvals that you have made since the reface, the refresh reface of Southtown in 2012. Thank you. Um, Sonia, and then Harry Beth, if you want to hang there, that'd be good. Um, this is another circumstance where a wall sign could usually be approved by staff, but in this particular situation, um, <clears throat> 
Mary Beth mentioned that the mall was refreshed and that was in 2012 when there were some new tenants coming in. Planet Fitness received approval for a yellow sign, Dollar Tree had a green sign, and Hobby Lobby received approval for an orange sign. Those were all in conflict with the original 1983 um, signage plan that required red. So the plan commission as a part of those 2012 approvals um, required that any future tenant in this space come back for plan commission approval of the colors to determine if it was consistent with that other uh, approval. What's the square footage of Hockey Town or Hockey Giant? The the facade is it okay? Do you want me to talk or something? I'm, I'm like think, thinking the square footage of the retail uh, of, of the space itself. If we know that, I do not know that. I apologize. Yeah. Do you have anything that indicates the, the front, the width of the store? Front. No, <clears throat> I am looking actually at the last page on the attachment that Sonia gave to you. And while I can't answer your question directly, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. I, I would direct you to the top drawing where we've got Planet Fitness on the left and the word tenant on the right mm -hmm. on that top row. Yeah. That's where that's where Hockey Giant is going. And it seems to me to be proportionate to the length of that facade relative to the other tenants. But that's as specific as I can give you in an answer. The reason I asked at page five and nine on our handout goes back to the notes from in the middle of the page, Mr. Hamburg asked for a friendly amendment to the motion that a finding of fact be included that reads that this is an 80,000 square foot space with no tenant being less than 10,000 square feet. So is that still the case? That they, Mr. Amber, I, I can't answer if it's still the yeah. case, but that was our intent, and our intent was we did grant them this last space to be able to put a sign on it, knowing that they were going to come back right. for a sign for the last tenant. We talked okay. about that. So I know where you're going with it, but I, I yeah. we created the sign space, and to me, it's proportionate in the science space. Okay. And, and, and when we said that, we had talked to them about the spaces because Hobby Lobby is a lot bigger than that. I, I think what they told us they were going to cut down to that there would be no smaller space. Right. And we left them one space to be able to put the last mm -hmm. tenant sign on. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I can't say if they've cut it up and they're only getting 8,000 square feet or what. I don't know from the outside it really matters as long as you see. As Mary Beth mentioned, there's not a lot of signs near this one. Right. And so what, what our intent was is not to oversign the small. And right now, I think they're hitting it right with where we expected signs. Any other discussion? Mr. Amber? I, I think the same on the back. I, I've got to say, instead of having just a blank masonry, pr fairly plain wall to have a few signs there makes it look like there's something going on, mm -hmm. there's some business there, we're open. And I, mm -hmm. I, I actually like having some signs there. As far as the colors, we let that cat out of the bag a long time ago. But this is nice. This blends in nicely. Oh, we did. It's, it's gone. Yeah. It's <laughs> Any other discussion? Yeah. I think it looks good. I think it fits to scale, it fills out the mall, I think it's good. Sure. Yeah, I agree with everything that Chris said, and when I look at the um, this page, mm -hmm. I think I'm reading that Dollar Tree lettering had been 42 inches, is that right? That's what I'm reading. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that's what I'm reading as well. Thinking oh. I see yes, there. So this is substantially <laughs> underneath that, and I think this looks great with its design. Chris? I think the scale and placement of the sign are fine. Ryan, any comment? Looks wonderful. Is there a motion? Move approval. Second. Further discussion? No All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you. Bridget Olsen. When will it be open? I ordered it because she came and saw you on her birthday for me. Thank so you. we're not close. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on to um, 
new business. This would be 6B, public hearing on request by Anthony Harper, Legacy Martial Arts, for a zoning permit to operate a martial arts studio at 6203 Monona Drive. Good evening. And who will be the first here? I'm Anthony Harper. Anthony, welcome. And I've got several here. Uh, but why don't you kick us off? And I've got deer here at 6401 Offshore. That's correct. Great. Okay, go for ahead, Mr. Um, just trying to expand the martial arts community and bring something to Monona that's not there right now. Myself, Master Topper, Grandmaster Ben, Ms. Carlson, we've all been in martial arts pretty much our entire life. Mm -hmm. um, four of us have uh, attended school under uh, Grandmaster Sanki Peck, Peck's Martial Arts over on East Washington, in the old Sunnyside Elementary. And we want to bring that legacy to our school. And that's why you came up with the name, Legacy Martial Arts. We want to pay honor to the people that have gone before us, both as instructors and as teammates, whether it's in competition or coaching kids for tournaments. And we are a very kid-centric organization, very community-based. We look at programs such as the after-school programs, summer camp, winter vacation camps, things like that, tournaments with the youth. We have one of our students over there. Welcome. <laughs> Um, he's been uh, studying uh, under Grandmaster Peck, or Bent, uh, when we were both over at another school, and he has won several tournaments, participated in several, um, and we just want to be able to bring something to Monona that currently we do not find being fulfilled. Thank you. Um, I also have Kenneth Bent. Yes. My name is Kenneth Bent, and uh, I'm the head, in head instructor over there. I'm a master instructor. I'm a seventh degree black belt. I've been involved in a community in this area for over 40 years. Um, I've worked with uh, different organizations. I've worked with the NIP program, working with young youth. Um, that was run by Dane County. I've also been a coach in football and basketball. I've had a martial arts school in Madison for over 35 years. I used to be on Rimrock Road. I had one on East Washington Avenue and I had one out at, uh, on Park Street for quite a few years. Um, I, I live right over here in, in near Monona. I live on Turner Avenue, right near La Follette High School. And my main thing is to work with young kids. The way I see things are happening in, in, in with the youth these days, I feel that it's necessary for us to get more involved with some of the high schools and some of the schools. And, and, and we're working with the NIP program. We're also working with uh, Boys and Girls Club, um, trying to get kids involved in, in something positive so they don't hang out in the streets and, and things like this. So. Um, I've been around for a long, long, long time. I, I've done this for a lot of years, and, I, and this is one of my passions, is to work with young kids. Um, and I've been doing that all my life, and uh, I just feel that uh, we, we found a really nice location um, on Monona Drive, and uh, uh, we'd just like to, hopefully, that you guys approve the zoning for us to continue on with this uh, martial arts school. We had a, we had a kind of a... Um, just a kind of a feel feel out party or whatever th down there we had over a hundred people show up mm -hmm. and uh, that was uh, last Saturday and just to see how it, it would go and everything else a lot of people are interested the kids are interested and I had family people stopping in and saying this is good for this area there we we also realized there's probably eight to nine schools in this area that um, have a lot of issues um, with kids uh, not going to school, not doing things that they should be. And also, I wanted to add too, um, we are connected with the Madison Police Department. Mm -hmm. I, I, I taught a lot of the Madison Police Department martial arts. And one of the young ladies uh, who was a black belt, she studied under me for 12 years, she also frequently is going to be coming back and working with some of the kids and, and stuff like this too. So I just want you to know we're just not going to be a fly by night thing here. We're trying to work in the community as well as, as much as we can and trying to build young people. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Got uh, Russell Topper. Oh, I, I, I'm Russell. <laughs> 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 I think Mr. Brad covered it fairly well. But yeah, it, it, it's about, we want to, I mean, we want to run a profitable business, of course, but we're, our main thrust of starting this initially was we were dissatisfied where we were at. And I, I didn't feel that they were giving the kids the service that they should. Mm -hmm. So that's what we've set our mission up to be, and uh, we hope everything will work out. Thank you. That's about it. We've got uh, James Andrews. Yes. Sir, would you like to? Uh, 
I'm Jimmy Andrews. Um, I've owned that building since 1978. It used, as you probably know, it was Central Service. Mm -hmm. Sold it to my number one girl. Mm -hmm. uh, she resold it, and in the last 10 years, the building has probably not shown well. Okay, I finally had to uh, have them removed, and we're trying to bring it back to life. We painted the front. We're going to paint the sides. We'll do some landscaping in spring. <laughs> Uh, we want to have some green area. These people have just done a, a wonderful job inside as far as cleaning it up and making it a, a uh, potentially excellent business. And I would hope that the commission or the board approves their request. Uh, they seem to be just, uh, their, their passion is, is truly amazing. So I thank you. Thank you. Um, and we have Gretchen Carlson. Gretchen? Hi, I'm Gretchen Carlson. I've been teaching martial arts since 2007. Um, my background is very much in the history and the culture of martial arts, and it's very important to me to bring that to the students, to bring the cultural aspect. I trained in Korea, where Taekwondo got started. Um, so I was willing to go to Korea. I w I'm willing to travel for my training. If this, is, if this school is here, I don't have to. This is a kind of school that I would travel for. I would travel a very long distance for. So the idea that it can be right here is really, really exciting, and I hope this gets approved. Thank you. Anyone else wish to say anything? If not, I'll close the public hearing session and then move on to the pre-hearing conference on the request. Um, so so this is a new use in the building, so that's why it's here at the Plan Commission for review of a zoning permit. Um, the building's also been vacant for a while. I don't think it's quite been vacant for six months, but that's another standard in the zoning code that would require Plan Commission review of a zoning permit. Um, it's a pre-hearing conference, so no action would be taken tonight, but I've listed a few areas for discussion in the Plan Commission staff report, including the proposed building improvements. Um, parking availability for the proposed use and also to discuss parking availability for the other half of the building it's going to be currently used as i understand um, for continued use by jim andrews for office space and storage um, and the martial arts school Okay, um, and then if that use were to leave in the future and that half of the building were available for a new business to come in, the plan commission would need to consider parking availability on the site, not for a specific use, um, but outside of what the martial arts requires. And then we've also discussed with Mr. Harper that um, the martial arts school would like to expand in the, in the future into that half of the building and would then use all of the parking on the site for the martial arts school. Um, how many parking stalls does it have now? The site? 29? Yeah. One of the 29? Yes. Really, it's 29. Okay. Commission members, any comments for the applicant? Mr. Mr. Kugel. I'll, I'll, I'll just lead it off. I think this would, be, this would be an acceptable use for this location if parking is is available. I, I will add that I had the pleasure to meet Ken during the Memorial Day parade this year because I was helping line up people in the, in the parade. I think that was your group. They had a whole bunch of kids there. I bet you they had 50, maybe more. Yeah. They, they, were the, they were so respectful. They lined up. There was no problem. I saw these kids come and I just thought, oh boy, this is going to be a handful here. <laughs> and I tell you, they really, I was, I was impressed. I mean, when Ken said, let's line up, everybody lined up. Everybody was in their place. They, uh, so I, I, I can tell from that that you run a good school. So I would hope that this would be an acceptable use for this building. Again, if, if parking is um, 
adequate for the number of people that are going to have coming and going there. Mr. Amberton? Uh, I was just going to reiterate what the staff had mentioned. We've had a lot of uh, people with similar types of uses, like a karate studio or something mm -hmm. similar, come to Monona and, try and look for approval. And the biggest problem we have, well, the number one problem we've always had is parking. It's always parking, and, and that's why she's being so careful mentioning it to you. Mm -hmm. This is one of the first places somebody's wanted to actually occupy where I think you could actually survive with the parking you have. Mm -hmm. It's critical to the lifeblood of your business. If you can't get people in, they're, they're going to go somewhere else no matter how good you are. There, there's no extra parking on Monona Drive. There's nowhere else to take a car. So, so it's really important that you have adequate parking, which you do, but it affects the other half of your building, and that's why she's mentioning it. We keep mentioning it. Is, is if this is as successful as we all hope it is, it impacts what you can put in the other half. Because when, when you come to us for the other half of your building, if you're no longer there, we'll say, well, let's look at what the uses are on the site and how much parking you have, put them together, will it work? So, so as owner of the building, you need to be aware of that. I, I'm sure you are, but I just had to say it again. Uh, there's, excuse me, there is three parking places in back. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Massive dumpster enclosure, too. I don't know what you're going to do with all that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But I also, <laughs> yeah, I also haven't seen a lot of people come for this type of a use with such a strong network of support. You have, you have a lot of people here that seem to be very passionate. So I echo Mr. Kugel's comments that it would probably be a really great use for the area. You keyed right in on all the other applicants, and we're going to yeah. talk about landscaping. <laughs> 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 your, your sign is almost all building and blacktop, and there, there's very little green space on it. I'd be really interested when you come back for your final approval. Just know where you think you could do something. The one place I'll tell you where I think it would be nice is a, we normally have an overhead projector. We put it on the screens. It's really great. Everybody can see. <clears throat> but you have that one grass island where you come in between you and the uh, fat jacks. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the terrace trees, there's a terrace tree up towards the north end of your property. There's nothing down here because there's a light pole. So this would be a fabulous place for a tree. Because it's back away from the light pole, it would grow up from the crown wouldn't go. That particular piece, we're looking at possibly putting siding, a sign. A landscape ground sign? And I, I think you could probably get, get them both in there. I'd want to look at it. But, and if it's a landscape ground sign too, if you can't get a tree in there, there'll certainly be landscaping around the sign. Yes. But but that island is certainly begging for landscaping. Yes. Other than that, I don't know where you're anticipating getting more green space. Uh, well, to the north, that side, if you know, there's some space, about maybe three and a half four. Okay, then you Perfect. can put a lot of stuff in there. Uh, I don't like the look coming up and on the drive mm -hmm. in the north because it looks like a billboard. Mm -hmm. and then, like, two, two foot cut and then plant that. Perfect. Just to break it up. Curb appeal is everything. Yes. You can have the greatest business inside this building, but if you don't have good curb appeal, some of your clientele will drive by. Yes. They won't, just won't like the look of it. So, so whatever you can do, and we're, we're tough on it because as a community, we spent millions of dollars fixing up Winona Drive for all our businesses because we want it to be inviting. And we, as you know, with, with our streetscape and everything we did there, we, we made, a, I think, a major impact on Monona Drive. We want it to be inviting for all our businesses. And everything a private business can do helps towards that, too. Certainly towards your business. As you mentioned, you've been a long-standing Monona business in there. It's been a great business, but it's an older building. So, so the things, little things you can do to help that will certainly help the curb appeal on that, too. But other than that, I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly support this <coughs> proposal. Thank you. I think one of the comments on parking, too, the hours of operation will sort of a hello goodbye as far as central service being in the, in the day, daytime hours and then the evening hours that they be open, so there shouldn't be too much overlap. Dorsen. I think it's an appropriate use. I agree with the comments on parking, and I agree that it seems to have sufficient parking. I'm, uh, I think that getting a, a thriving business in that particular area in that building will be a big help to the home Monona Drive. Sure. I think this is a great use for the property. Um, I hope you can make the parking work. I'm assuming that you would have some drop-off for younger students, yes. for parents dropping off and things, so I, I would think you'd be able to accommodate that. Um, I agree with Chris's comments on some of the landscaping, and I don't know if these are real recent pictures or if I'm reading this right, but it looks like the south side of the building might have hoping it's not landscaping, but it looks like it might be weeds going around. It's all there. asphalt. I can't tell. It's all asphalt. Is it all asphalt? It looks like they've cropped through there. So it'd be great if um, you know the building owners can do a little something maybe on 
around the south side there. It just looks a little dilapidated on that section, and that's not the kind of appearance you're going to want. So it's something maybe to be looked at. All right. No additional comments. Appropriate use. I, I, I agree, Mr. Hummer. Well, just in response to that comment, Sharon, uh, I don't think there's a lot of space between the building and the south property okay. line, and they need yeah, access well, to the I back. In my look at it, you have some staff parking, employee parking in the back, and that side is a great spot for a bus to tuck into if you happen to be bringing somebody in or out by bus. So it's going to be difficult, I think, to have the business functional and, and try to add something there. You can take a look at it. But I, from what it looked like to me, I don't think you have a lot of room for your property line you're building. Well, speaking of the bus, um, we have the boys and girls club, um, and they, they have a small bus that would be, um, that area could be used for. Pull in and back right into that area right. and, and have a safe place to load yeah. and unload. And so, I mean, you really have a lot of amenities that no one else has had when they've tried to put this type of use on the uh, Can I just add to, we, we, we did a lot of searching before we. Could, could I ask you to come up? They, oh, they do yeah, record sorry. this and we want to make we, sure they uh, pick you up on the. Sorry, you get to be on TV. <laughs> <laughs> we did a lot of searching. Uh, we, we looked at a lot of different buildings. We looked at the top of the hill up there where. Um, uh, creative uh, salad creation, salad, salad creation oh, yeah. was uh -huh. parking terrible. Not yeah. terrible and we decided not to go there we went we were over on Mano on Broadway um, down by the uh, the, uh, the car wash down there where um, yeah. what was the name of the dance studio the right step dance studio was at, in there for a while the parking again we there was a there's a bar there and there's a laundry mat mm -hmm. and there was only maybe three or four stalls that were for that place and then we also looked at um, a spot right on another right spot on yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes we did there. yeah there's good parking there but you know <laughs> oh man that space there was too big for us but anyway but maybe so we 10, square feet. Yes. and we just happened to uh, we just happened to uh, to come across the space and I gave Jim a call and 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 it just seemed to, everything just seemed to roll into place and, and and we were real happy with him and also the space there and he and his willingness to, to help us out as much as he can and so we were very happy to get that space so I just hope you guys uh, or look at it and approve it for us uh, it would well, be what I appreciate can, it from the comments uh, the use which is very the first test seems to be acceptable to everyone. Again, this is a pre-hearing conference, yes. so we're not making decisions tonight. But they would like to see some, um, you know, address some landscaping uh, issues, come back with that. And then parking, um, I guess there's a comfort level on parking, would that be a correct statement? I think so. Any options in this property? Yeah. Oh, Especially so. considering the existing use in the other half of the building. Uh, I yeah. think there's adequate parking here. Yeah. So, Yes, Jim. Yep. I do have a landscaping plan, but it didn't include the uh, north and south sides, so they're doing that. But that's, okay. That's fine. Fine. I think that. I think we, we understand that. Many times, if we, when we grant approval, we'll, we'll grant that since it's so late in the season that you can wait till we'll have a date. What you're comfortable with, May 15th, oh, June 15th, to have, to have it in something like that. So what'll happen then is in two weeks. Um, we're back in two weeks. Yes. Be back for final <coughs> approval in two weeks then, but. Yes, Mr. Kubo. I think it'd be good if you, if you, when the next time you come back, you have give us kind of an idea of how many kids are in the building at I, I one given time. I can time. answer that question right now. Yeah, for yeah. You. Most of our children's classes are going to run here from six to about fifteen kids a class. Oh, and that's that's about all. You, know, you get more than that, it's difficult to keep discipline. As great as our instructors are, <laughs> kids are kids. So that's it. <laughs> so we limit the class, and it also it, by focusing on the kids having a smaller teacher-student uh -huh. ratio. It, it increases a, a, the, the learning capacity of the children themselves. So even if everybody came in a separate car at 15 and they were changing There's over still to plenty of parking 10, space. you're never right. going to, you, you couldn't have hardly 30 cars there at once. No, no. we cannot have 30 no. cars in that parking okay. lot, even if we tried. Mm -hmm. um, it's just that's the way most martial arts classes are structured is you get that 10 to 12, maybe 15 kids in a class, uh -huh. that's fine. I don't think I've ever been in a class with 30 kids ever. Okay, I, I, would, I, I didn't know, so thanks. Any other questions we can answer for you? No, that's good. I think one more question yes, sir. right here. Um, I'm trying to make sure I understand the layout of the floor plan. Okay. Is there more than one classroom space? I mean, could more than one class be going on at the same time? Um, yes, there could be more than one class going on. Our 
business model incorporates a child's class and an adult class in the separate teaching area. And of course, adults are usually anywhere from maybe six to eight at most. Okay. And again, it's a family structured environment. We have lots of parents and children taking classes together. That's why, for example, Friday nights are gonna be a family class. Mom, dad, kids, grandma, grandpa, whomever. I mean, I've got a student uh, in another school where grandma, he talked grandma into joining. The kid was on the competition team, grandma joined it. So and when I say grandma, I'm not talking the grandma that we picture in her mind. <laughs> She's very active, so it's, it was really fun to see her involved. Okay, so let me understand this. The only objection that we've got sitting right now is something to do with landscaping, correct? It's not really an objection. The pre -hearing, okay. function of the pre-hearing conference is to give feedback to the applicant to, and then come back for final approval. And what we're looking for is um, more information on what your plans are for landscaping. And, okay. And that we're going to want to see it look as attractive as possible for your successes. Okay, then could I make a motion from the floor that we go ahead and approve this tentative based on me tomorrow afternoon getting you a copy of the landscape plan? So we have to correct it's it. Not, it's not posted. It's not listed on the agenda that way, so we can't okay. take action on it. Yeah, tonight. we can't okay. take action tonight. A question? Yes. Do all dumpsters have to be enclosed? Now we don't need necessarily the two. Uh, you know, they have, I don't know what they had in there. All outdoor, outdoor storage needs to be screened from view. I'm not exactly sure where where the dumpster is. Someone else? It's in the back. It's in view of the apartments. Okay. It, it needs to be screened. Oh, right. So we shrunk the size just so it has a space. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Just so it's screened. Yeah. There you go. So, and the materials, <laughs> same color as the building, kind of. That's about all. Um, we generally ask for it to complement the building. Mm -hmm. So if you attach it to the building and, and you try to get some materials that complement, in other words, don't put vinyl siding on a brick building or, or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and make it nice. Uh, your, your neighbors to the east do see it. The, the apartment building looks right down at it. And it's not the most attractive area back there. No. no offense, it's just it's not. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. For well, thank you, everybody, for coming. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to number, number seven, miscellaneous business staff report regarding status of the development of the project proposal. Sonia. Next meeting is October 27th. It sounds like we'll have three items um, at least. One is the return of the martial arts studio, and then um, we have a proposal for an outlot on the American property, which is at the base of the Monona Drive Hill, so corner of Monona Drive and Broadway, um, and that will be for a multi-tenant building with two restaurant spaces and <clears throat> an office retail space in the center. So um, that will require a CSM as well as certified survey map, um, which will go through that process um, at probably at the same time. Plans are online for that proposal too, if you want to view them. Yeah, where would that? Um, you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Mymonona.com, and then at the top, I want to view development plans. Okay. That's where you would find it. And that's in the America Inn property. Mm -hmm. So what happens where all to the trees? Are all the oh. oaks that Jeff preserved there? Oh, really? In the front of Take it, down the trees. Um, yeah, I, I don't know exactly how many are proposed to be maintained, but that was an issue we discussed. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Do you have a third item? Um, redevelopment area number seven, redevelopment project, or number nine project plan for Bridge Road and Broadway. That is the waterfront redevelopment area. And you're going to have to. That plan is online? The draft plan is online. That one's in a different location. If you go to the planning department web page and then click on the header that says waterfront um, redevelopment, you can access the plan through there. Okay. Okay. You looking for extra homework right now? <laughs> <or what>? <laughs> <laughs> um, Moving on to seven, which would be request seven B request for information concerning development projects. Team, anything? Move adjournment. Is there a second. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you all.
Thank you.